Yeah, so what we have here is a 2018 GLC 300 Mercedes SUV. It's basically an SUV based off the C300 Coupe uh, four-door and cabriolet. If you see on one of my other videos, I have some driving dynamic of that vehicle. This vehicle is equipped with 241 horsepower, four-cylinder turbo motor. It's got a nine-speed transmission. Uh, very nice little car. Uh, it's one of the cars I guess Mercedes is making to compete with the uh, BMW X3. And basically, it's a nice little car. It's four door. Here you have the leather seats. Nice. All the controls for the leather seats here. You have all your door switches. Nice door panel. Again, leather on the armrest. A very big thing of mine that I like to see is a good quality armrest, being that it's one of the few things you touch in a car. Uh, here you got the nice Mercedes steering wheel. It's nice and thick. Paddle shifters. Uh, not really necessary in this car. This car does feel SUV-ish. Very, very clunky on the road, which is a good and bad thing. Some people like that SUV feeling. Some people like a more car-like feeling. My X3 was more like a car. This definitely feels more robust. This vehicle here is not equipped with uh, 4Matic. It's just a real wheel drive car. So it's actually very fun to drive. You have the dual exhaust there, GLC 300. You got the roof here, you got the panoramic sunroof. Jump in here real quick. All right, let me start a wrap. Okay. Yeah, so this vehicle is a good little SUV, good runabout SUV, good uh, entry level luxury SUV into Mercedes world. Give you a view of the panoramic roof here. So, that's that. That's the shade it has. It'll open the shade, and then you go here one more time, and that will open your roof. Um, so. Some panoramic roofs I'm a fan of, some I'm not. This one here only opens that much. Even though it's got all that glass, it does not open anymore. So, I'm not a fan of that. And it's one of the reasons why I don't like all panoramic sunroofs. Some completely open, some partially open, some are just for show. Nissan, actually, a couple of years ago on the Maxima, they came out with just a sunroof that goes right down the middle like a skunk stripe. And that never moves. It just sits there and brings light into the car. Uh, this panoramic roof is more glass than opening. So, I mean, it's nice. It's a nice look. It's better than having just a plain old roof. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'd go for that option. I think a regular old sunroof is just fine. You get the same amount of space and you don't have to pay all that money. And then you don't have to worry about it leaking in the future. Uh, I will touch on the wood grain in this Mercedes. If you see my other video on the C300, there, there was a more natural looking wood and it was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous wood. This is more in line with like the wood you get nowadays, this laminate with the chrome gloss look. And I really don't like it because as you can see here, you get swirls and smudges in it and it's really not nice. It would be better if they just did the black piano finish in this car at that point. Um, another thing I want to touch on that's actually really nice about the C300 is it doesn't have that big clunky mouse in front of your guide, your spin control here. Um, as you can see, this model's got a few more options than the C300. There's still a couple of things missing here, but you have all your other stuff, and these are kind of the buttons that were missing in the C300. Um, yeah, other than that, you know, the car is very nice. There you have several different modes you can toggle through here, Sport Plus. You can customize into an individual mode and adjust whatever settings you want to adjust. You stick to Sport mode. I usually drive it in Sport Plus mode. And the rear wheel drive out here. Car actually, believe it or not, this SUV, once you get it on the highway, does feel very similar to the C300 convertible. So if you're a two car family and the C300 convertible is on your radar and you need an SUV for the family, it's a very nice combination to have the C300 and the C300 Cabriolet. Those two vehicles complement each other nicely. The driving dynamics are very similar. And if you have to jump from one car to the other, it won't be much of a difference. Let me give you a little bit of a. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a test driving dynamics now. Um, 
you got some nice controls up here before we take off. You have your sun uh, sunglass holder and your lights and your SOS and all that other stuff. Turn on the AC controls. Everything works automatically. You do have a volume button here for the radio. That's nice because you don't have to reach all the way across everywhere. I hate this shifter. My Durango has a circular shifter and I'm not too crazy about it, but I hate this shifter even more. That shifter right there inside, uh, right here, this thing. I hate, hate, hate this thing. Because it's in a spot where if you're used to driving Hondas or some Japanese cars or even some other American cars, it's in the same spot as the windshield wiper stick. And you can't tell how many times while I'm driving that a little bit of rain comes and I go to hit it like so down like that. You hit it down like that, thinking it's gonna start the intermittent wipers, but it doesn't. It doesn't do anything. And I'm afraid that one day I may hit it upwards and it'll throw the car in park while I'm driving, even though I think there's a fail safe that won't allow you to do that on these cars. Um, yeah, so as you drive this car, the first thing that stands out is it's very Mercedes, very comfy, very plush, very soft riding. And now this is the GLC, which is their new entry level. Well, it's actually above the GLA, which is their little like, it's not even an SUV. It's basically a mini station wagon based off the CLA, which is their little super coupe four door that they made for a while ago. And, uh, you know, that car itself is very cramped because the roof, the roof line is very low also. So, you know, when you uh, take into account that this car has an actual high roof line, it's actually nice sitting inside. It makes you feel like it's a lot more substantial vehicle than what it actually is. And you have that interior space in case you need to go to Home Depot, grab some stuff, load some stuff in the car. You can because there's, there's plenty of things, plenty of space to put stuff. Uh, I also like the low entry height. Uh, it's good for if you have children. You don't really have to put a step bar on this vehicle. You can get in and out very easy. Um, the driving is very crisp. You know, you, you move the steering wheel, the car moves. So I would definitely say Mercedes-Benz hit a home run with this little SUV because uh, unlike my X3, you know, I had the X3. It's very small, cramped. This now feels very substantial for an entry-level, small-level family SUV. Uh, combine it with the four-cylinder turbo, which is in that C300, and it's plenty of pep. It's not blinding fast. I believe the zero to 60 is uh, 6.3 seconds. I don't doubt it. Uh, you got a horsepower of 241. Plenty of horsepower to get around. I mean, people spoil nowadays. We live in an age of uh, 700 horsepower Hellcats and 750 horsepower Corvettes coming down the pipe. So, I mean, realistically, Three, 240, 300 horsepower almost in the hands of an everyday person and an everyday grocery getter, that's a lot of horse, you know? I mean, my Mustang, when it originally came stock, was only 225 horsepower, so we're definitely living in good horsepower times. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I'm trying to get better at this, trying to give more information. Uh, this vehicle is equipped with heated seats. Uh, there is a lot of other things that this vehicle has that I'm sure if you go on the website and research it, you'll see it. I just want to give people an inside look, a driving dynamic look of the vehicle before you actually get out to the dealerships and, and take a look at these cars. Now, I will tell you, Mercedes does have every year, I'm sure you watch TV, they have Christmas events. And that would probably be the best time to get one of these vehicles because during those Christmas events, the actual dealership, the actual Mercedes themselves is giving out the uh, the incentives. So the dealers are able to lower the prices on the vehicles with no problems because they get the discount right from man, the manufacturer. Uh, this car also has the same cup holder space in the middle of the center console, which makes more sense in this car because it's an SUV. Uh, in the C300, I don't know how this would all plan out if the vehicle was a stick shift. So, uh, yeah, this is the GLC 300. Uh, Mercedes definitely made it worth their, made it worth your while as a consumer to come check this vehicle out. I really like the outside of this vehicle. Um, still maintains some of that sporty silhouette. So still maintain some of that sporty silhouette that uh, Mercedes has started putting into their cars, including the bigger dogs, the S-Class, S-600s, S-63s. So, you know, this side of uh, Mercedes cars, you know, if you can't do an AMG, this is a nice way to get into Mercedes vehicles 
and start to understand why Mercedes is what it is, you know, why people go nuts for these cars. And it's more than just a nameplate. You know, their association with uh, Chrysler for a period in time, I guess, gave them an understanding into the American car world. So they're definitely putting out products that people will want to buy. They're definitely putting out products that uh, people want to spend their money on. And uh, this GLC 300, man, this, they hit a home run with this car. This car feels very solid. It feels very tight. Uh, it's definitely worth the money. You feel the Mercedes-Benz build quality in it. Uh, the C300 I have on my uh, reviews there, that was a fun car. It was a peppy car. But I envision that car more of like for young professional women who are not really into cars but just want something cute to drive, who really want something nice that responds on the road. And, you know, just a good quality car. That C300 fits the bill all day. That's also like a car maybe... You buy your daughter if she got uh, straight A's and a scholarship to college, you know, or I, I could see more guy. I could see guys going more for the hard top coupe on that car because of just the silhouette and the style. It's a little bit more masculine, a little bit more muscular, whereas the C300 Cabriolets, they uh, they just um, they're not really a car guy's car. They're not really uh, an enthusiast car, I should say. You know, I don't even like to say car guy because I know plenty of women that are into cars. Uh, it's not really a car enthusiast car. Uh, it's not something that you're going to go and drive and say, oh, wow, I can't wait to jump back in and drive it. But if you're looking to look good and cruise and drive down the highway and, and absorb some sun and absorb some music, that C300 Cabriolet does it all day. If you need a vehicle, you know, for your family and you're looking for an all-around utility vehicle that's not too expensive and it's pretty decent on gas and it's nice with luxury and gives you all the fit and feel that you're gonna need from a car then this mercedes glc 300 is probably your best bet so uh yeah keep your eyes on youtube uh, i should be bringing out some more videos some new more new cars and hopefully my videos will be getting better and better the content will get better and hopefully you guys like it please comment and subscribe like in the bottom let me know what i could do better let me know what uh, other cars you might want to see thanks have a good day guys